All right, guys, it is 2024. It's time to talk about our first movie of the year, and that is Night Swim. Oh, boy. Forced into an early retirement by an illness, former baseball player Ray Waller moves into a new house with his wife and two children. He hopes that the backyard swimming pool will be fun for the kids and provide physical therapy for himself. However, a dark secret from the home's past soon unleashes a male violent force that drags the family into the depths of an inescapable terror. So in other news, basically there's a haunted swimming pool in the backyard. So Night Swim is actually based off a short film from what I've read, and it stars White Russell and Carrie Condon as the, the parents here in the movie. So going into this, guys, I'm going to be honest. I wasn't expecting much, just because January oftentimes is where horror movies go to die. Now, don't get me wrong, there can be the rare exception. For example, last year with Megan, that ended up being one of my favorite horror movies of the year. I know some people are split on how they feel about that, so take that as you will. But that ended up being one of my favorite horror movies of the year, and that was actually done by Blumhouse as well. So there was a tiny, tiny little bit of hope here for this movie that maybe this would be a fun surprise. Unfortunately, I'll tell you guys right off the bat that Night Swim is not very good. All right, guys, real quick, before we get into the rest of the review, I just had to, I want to rant a little bit about something because there's been this weird phenomena occurring for me the past couple times that I've seen movies by myself. So, as you guys know, I review movies on this channel. I, so I see quite a few films throughout the year. Oftentimes, I have to go by myself because, you know, my friends are busy or maybe it's just a film that they're not interested in. But I am, so I want to go check it out. So I end up going a lot of times just by myself, and oftentimes those can be, you know, really fun experiences just seeing a film by yourself. Uh, but anyways, so for Night Swim, I'm going to get my tickets, and at least around where I am, maybe there's like one theater that that's not, not the case, but at least for where I am, most of the tickets, the theaters, they are, uh, you have to pre-buy your tickets and select your seats. So it, the movie starts at like 7.30, uh, I'm getting to leave, it's about... 7 10 or something like that so not too long before the movie starts if i was like i you know i don't really care if i, I miss any of the previews or anything like that it's fine tonight and uh I, so i get there's nothing sold out i buy a seat right in the middle i'm like okay perfect you know perfect place to, to watch the film i get there and you know it's maybe about like because i don't live too far from this theater so it's like five minutes before the movie starts i'm sitting down i'm ready to go all right let's do this sure enough uh see some people coming in and i'm like I bet you they're going to sit right next to me or, or fairly close to me. And yes, <laughs> end up sitting like literally, there's like one seat between us and then right next to me. But the rest of the theater was empty. There ended up being some other people that came in, but there were still plenty of other seats that are open that were not even remotely clear uh, next to me. And hey, I don't mind. Like if I'm going to a, a movie where, you know, it, it's sold out and there's like only one seat, obviously there's going to be people sitting next to me. So that's not the big deal. But at least for me, if I'm going to see a movie and I see that other people have already bought tickets, I will purposely pick a seat that is not near anybody else just to kind of let them have, you know, their own space. So I don't know. I, maybe I'm just being ridiculous with that whole thing. But the past couple times that I've seen a movie by myself, that has happened. And I'm just sitting there when I see the people and I'm like, I swear to God, this person sits right next to me. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> but anyways, we'll get back, get back to the review of Night Swim. So I'm sitting there, and the first half of the film, I'm going to be honest, it wasn't, obviously it wasn't the best thing that I've ever seen, but for me it wasn't the worst movie that I've seen either. Trust me, I've definitely seen worse for that first half of Night Swim. So I'm sitting there and I'm going, okay, you know what, I, I see a lot of movies, I'm not going to like every single film that I see. I do try to avoid movies that I think look terrible or I'm not going to like, but... Especially when it's January, I kind of try to see everything I can because it's a little bit of a, a slow spell to start the new year. So that's why, you know, I went to go see this movie and it was a horror film. So I was like, all right, let's, I'll give it a chance at least. So, you know, that first half, I'm like, okay, you know, I, I it, it's, it's okay. It's nothing special. I'm not going to pick it up. But at least so far, I didn't feel like I was, you know, wasting my time. And then the third act hits, and yeah, everything kind of went downhill really fast from there. I think my biggest gripes with this movie are that, one, the film is just not scary at all, which is really unfortunate because 
I thought that this movie did have some potential there, the idea of something coming after you in a swimming pool, because, you know, you've heard about people having that fear of being in a swimming pool and, and like a shark or something like attacking them somehow, it gets in their pool even though that can't happen. Uh, so people have that fear and I thought that maybe they could have played into that, obviously not with like a shark, but whatever the creature was in this film. So I thought there was, you know, some potential there, but they just didn't take advantage of that. And, and for me, I go back to when I was a kid in the 90s growing up watching Are You Afraid of the Dark? If you guys have seen the show, I'm talking about the episode called Dead Man's Flow. So a little bit of a history. I think I did a video way back on this and I might have mentioned this like way earlier on my channel. But for you guys who haven't seen that, the episode, there is this swimming pool where all of a sudden kids start getting drowned by this, this creature that people, a lot of people can't see. And when you finally see it in the episode, this thing is fucking terrifying. The way that it looks, I remember seeing this as a kid, and at the time, no lie, I was taking, just started taking swimming lessons when this episode came out, so I was scared shitless. But honestly, even today, the way that this thing looks, I mean, the design of this creature, I still think this is pretty creepy and it holds up. So. There, is, there was definitely some potential there, and they just didn't take advantage of that. As far as the, the look of the creature here, I won't get into the actual design of what it you know, specifically looks like, but I will just say that the way what you do get to see, you can just tell that a lot of CGI was used, and I, I don't know what the budget this film has. I imagine it wasn't huge, but it, it just looked awful, and... Every time that you saw that, that would be a moment where it's like, oh, that would, that might scare you, especially if it was like a jump scare or something. But anytime you saw that creature, it just completely took me out of the film because you could tell that it just it was didn't have the possibility of being real. And the other thing with this movie that really disappointed me, or that I think my biggest problem with the film was, is that I think where this movie was based off a short and trying to stretch it to a full-length feature you can just tell that they really, they ran out of interesting material to pad that, the, you know, the runtime that the film has. And it isn't a long film, but there just wasn't enough of a story there to make it interesting or to make it even scary, you know, like as I was just talking about. So those are probably my two biggest problems with the movie. As far as the actors go, you know, Wyatt Russell and Carrie Condon, I've seen their other projects, so I know that they are good actors. They can put out good work. I just don't think that the script and the writing here did them any favors, especially Wyatt. There were some moments watching the film and I'm like, ooh, that that was a, that made me cringe a little bit. Just some of the, the line delivery and, and things like that. But I, I know the guy can put out good work. So I just think what he was trying to work with here, it, it wasn't working out, unfortunately. Uh, the kids, I'm not really as familiar with their previous work. Uh, but I, I thought that they were fine in the film too. I, I just think, honestly, it was... Combination of the writing, the script, it, it just wasn't there. So overall, guys, those are my thoughts on Night Swim. I'm not going to make this video like any longer than it really needs to be. Uh, it, it had some potential, but yeah, I just can't recommend this one, unfortunately. As far as the score goes, I'm going to give this a 4 out of 10. Uh, so I'm curious if you guys have seen the movie. I definitely want to hear what your thoughts are down below. Or if it's something, are you still planning to check out in theaters? Or maybe if you're, are you going to wait till it comes out in streaming? I uh, definitely want to hear your thoughts. So let me know down below in the comments. As always, guys, if you are new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button as well as the bell button next to it. That way you get notifications for all my new videos. Give this video a thumbs up. And as always, guys, please make sure to check back for more Pop Culture with Pat.